The coloring book niche on KDP is highly competitive and the books themselves are pretty time consuming to create and expensive to outsource. But today I'm gonna to show you how you can start using an amazing image generating AI called Midjourney to create a unique professional quality coloring book interior that you can then sell on Amazon in under 60 minutes. This AI is a game changer, not just for anyone creating low content books in the coloring book niche, but for anyone wanting to create custom images for their book covers or any other part of their book. If the concept of low content publishing is new to you and you wanna find out how you can start generating passive income, creating and selling low content books on the Kindle Direct Publishing platform, download my free guide, three steps to publishing your first low content book in less than a day down in the description below. To get started, you're gonna head over to midjourney.com and sign up for a free account. And you're also going to need to sign up for a free account over at Discord, which is a chat app. And once you've signed in to Midjourney, this is going to be what your gallery looks like. So these are all of the different things that I've created so far using Midjourney. I'm doing a lot of exploration around the coloring book idea, which we're going to get to. Um, but it's not just black and white images. These are some of the images I've also created. This obviously isn't something that I would use in a coloring book, but this is just a really good example of how amazing the images are that you can create with this AI. So I wanted to create something that looked kind of like my dog. I've got this, this French bulldog. Um, if you hover over, you can see the prompt. So I just entered in adorable all black French bulldog puppy lying in a green tartan dog bed in front of a fireplace. And this is what it came up with. Um, this one, this one as well. Honestly, I don't want to get too far off track here, but I just want to show you uh, the, the incredible capability that this AI actually has some more different examples down here. Now there's a free version. One thing to keep in mind with the free version, first off, you can create 25 free jobs and we'll get into what constitutes a job in a moment. But when you're creating these free jobs, you're not going to actually own these assets. So you won't be able to use them commercially. You do actually have to sign up for a paid subscription. And the basic one is $8 a month. And that will give you 3.3 hours a month. Each one of these jobs takes about a minute, so you can do the math as to how many jobs you'll actually be able to, to get out of that. There's also a standard and a pro plan. We're not going to get into that. You can check that out yourself when you check out Midjourney. But all of the paid plans include commercial usage rights. So firstly, you'll want to make sure that you find a decent niche. I always like using Publisher Rocket to do my niche and keyword research. For this example, I'm just going to be doing like a, a cute dog coloring book. So you can see I've kind of already gotten started here. This is one of my first coloring pages that I created using the, um, using Midjourney. And you can see this is a pretty high quality coloring page that would have taken God knows how long to draw on my own, if ever, because I'm certainly not the world's best artist. Something like this would probably take me all day. And this took one minute to create. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you actually create these images. So as I said, you'll have to get a Discord account. And this is just a free chat app. So this is the mid journey server. And I know it looks a little bit complicated and there's lots of stuff going on here, but don't worry about it. It's actually going to be a lot easier than you think. So you can see here, all of your work is just going to be created in the same feed that everyone else is creating their work in. So you can see these are all just different pieces of artwork that other people are creating right now. And I mean, you can see just how amazingly detailed and intricate some of these are. All right, so we'll scroll down to the end. You're gonna be sending it a message. So you're basically going to be sending the Mid Journey chatbot a message. And when you're in Discord, make sure that you're in the Mid Journey server, and then you're gonna to have to find one of these newbies channels. So it doesn't really matter which one, just click into one of them, and then you're good to go. Now you're going to use a command here. You're going to go into the message, and you're gonna type forward slash, and then you should get a bunch of commands pop up here. You're gonna use imagine. So that's going to auto populate prompt in here. And then you're going to give this thing a prompt. So for this example, we're working on coloring books. So let's just go back here and I'm going to kind of keep using some of the prompts that I've already used. So in order to get decent coloring pages, you're going to want to use keywords like black and white coloring page for kids, line drawing, cartoon style, just to let it know what the actual style is of the image you want to create. So I am going to just copy and paste that that seems to be working pretty well to get this coloring book style. So again, black and white coloring page for kids, cartoon style, and then whatever I want the drawing to be. So this is all about cute puppies. So let's go ahead, we'll type in 
you know, cute or adorable, whatever descriptor you can think of. And let's just try golden retriever puppy and we'll do catching a frisbee. And we'll just hit enter. Now, depending on the time of day, sometimes this feed, like it's really not moving right now, but oftentimes this thing is just moving so fast because there's so many people on it. So you might actually kind of just like get lost <laughs> in here as this moving. But what you can do is just go up here to your inbox and you can actually type out the command in your inbox um, as well. You can just start a new uh, direct message. But this is, you can just open this up and you can see that this is where it is now creating this for me. So you can see just in the time it took me to, to create that sentence, it has created these four different options. Now, if we're happy with those options, we can choose one of them and use it, or we can ask for another set of four. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, so we're going to go back to this prompt and get it to generate again. If you're doing, a, you'll notice here that this aspect ratio is just like a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. We don't want that unless you are planning on doing a, a totally square coloring book, then that's fine. But most likely you're going to be doing one that's in uh, a portrait aspect ratio. So you can specify that in your prompt. So I'm going to just copy and paste this prompt again. So you can click on this button. Actually, you can just um, do the forward slash imagine and I'm going to copy that prompt. Now to change the aspect ratio, I'm going to do a double hyphen, AR, and then four, five. That's gonna give us that portrait aspect ratio. Now I'll give you a little bit of a brief rundown of all the different parameters that you can add to the ends of prompts in a second. But this is gonna give us that rectangular landscape um, aspect ratio. So I'll go ahead and click enter again. And it's just at the top now, waiting to start. And you can see this, this is real time. Creating this from scratch. And you can see the different, the different phases, how it goes from something very rough to something a lot more refined. And again, it takes about a minute to generate four different options. Now keep in mind, the more detailed the prompt you give it, the better the image is going to be. So now I'm going to hit this button. It says jump. That's just going to jump to my image in the feed here. And now we can decide what we want to do with this. Now, if you're not happy with any of these, you can hit the re-roll button and it's going to generate four additional options using the exact same, exact same prompt that you already gave it. These buttons under here, this U1 to U4, this is going to generate a larger version of whichever. So this is one, two, three, four. So if I click one of these, it's going to generate a larger upscaled version of whichever one we, we click. And then the V one, two, three, four, that is going to create a slight variation of whichever of these selected grid images you select. And it takes that and it creates another four variations of that image. So I think for me, I think this one is probably the best option. So I'm going to, that's one, two, three. So I'm going to upscale that one. So I've clicked that. Now I can either scroll down, try and find it in the feed, or I'm just going to go back up here because it's just easier to keep track of where I am. Now that that's done, there's a few other options as well. So you can either make some variations. If I click that, it's going to generate a new grid of images based on this image. Using light upscale redo or beta upscale redo, that's just going to generate a new upscaled image. And then I can rate the images just to let this AI know if it's on the right track, if it's doing a good job or not, and this is how it learns. So I think this is getting there, but it's not quite exactly what I wanted. So let's just take a look at the make variations. We'll see what else it can come up with. Okay, let's check those out. It's 
So you can see it's just done some minor variations. The central um, image is more or less the same. It's just, you know, like I said, slight variations. But you kind of get the gist now of what it can do. Now going back over to the gallery here, you can check out the documentation. And it'll just show you, you know, how to work with the upscalers, the different commands, the different parameters. So the, the most important one, I think, is probably aspect ratio, because the default aspect ratio is going to be a square. There's also a few other ones that you can add on the end of your prompt. This chaos, this one creates more varied and unusual um, options. Lots of other things you can check out here. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to attempt to create 30 different decent looking coloring book pages all in this dog theme. And I'm gonna try and do it all under 60 minutes. So we can get that 30 page coloring book in under an hour. So I will see you back here shortly. All right, we are back and I've got my 30 coloring book pages. Now, full disclosure, this is actually a week after I shot the first half of this video. I ran out of time. Uh, I had to go pick up my kids from daycare. So right before I left, I probably had about five minutes left in that 60 minutes that I was going to take to create the coloring book. Couldn't wait any longer though, I had to leave. And then I reopened this back up this morning and it took me roughly about, well, about five minutes actually <laughs> to create the last couple of these pages. So I'll show you what I have come up with here. Lots of different variations. Now I used essentially the exact same prompt for every single one of these, except all I did was swap out the dog breed. So we'll just hover over this one here. So again, black and white coloring page for kids, cartoon style, adorable Alaskan Malamute puppy playing in flowers. So everything you're seeing here, exact same prompt, but I had gone to Google just to get a list of dog breeds and I just swapped out the dog breed. So you can do that too, if you're playing around with, uh, you know, if you want the same theme running throughout the entire coloring book. So this one, I actually did want it to be kind of a floral theme. If you don't want to theme down like that, that's fine. You can swap up the prompts, but I just wanted to point out that this is the exact same prompt for every single one of these. Now, once you've got images that you're happy with, you can just hover over and there's this, these three little dots here. And you just hit save image and that will download it to your computer. You can also create collections if you want. That can be handy if you're working on multiple books and you can start saving them to different collections. So let's go ahead. I've downloaded all of the images that I want to use. And we'll just go through. And I ended up, I think there might be 32 or 33 here. And uh, you'll see why in a minute. But we'll just go through them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, that's the last one. So you might have noticed flipping through here, a few of these kind of feel like they don't belong with the rest. It's kind of like a slightly different style. So for example, this one that kind of looks like a slightly different style than this one. Um, it's got thicker lines and it looks a little bit more cartoony. So keep that in mind. You want to make sure everything looks cohesive. There's a couple more here as well that kind of just feel like they don't quite fit into the style. Uh, another couple of things here, uh, where did that go? Like this one's kind of got like a, a hard line on the very left here. Uh, this one's got some weird writing on the bottom. So pay attention to those things. You're going to want to remove anything like that. This one's got a square here. So again, that might make it feel a little bit out of, out of place. Same with that one. Weird writing along the bottom. Like these two, they feel very different styles, right? So just again, pay attention to that. These two as well, it just, it feels like a different style. So something to pay attention to, you wanna make sure everything that you're using feels like it's belong, it belongs together and that it's cohesive. Now at this point, I would take all of these interior pages and I would put them into a program, either like Canva or Adobe InDesign or Affinity Publisher. And that is how I would, would compile these into an interior. I would then add my copyright page in the beginning. And of course, like I said, you're gonna to wanna to remove any weird things like, like writing on the bottom or, or like weird, 
you know, borders or anything like that. So once you've done with those edits, you'll just compile them. So again, Canva, Adobe InDesign, Affinity Publisher, anything like that. And then of course you're gonna to wanna to create your book cover. Now I'll link to a few different videos down below just on you know how you can compile this in one of those programs, how you can create a book cover in one of those programs as well. So I'll link to those down below. So once you've got that compiled interior and your cover file, you can upload those files to KDP. And within about 72 hours, that book will then be available and for sale on Amazon. Now I wish this would have existed when I first got started with low content publishing like six years ago. This would have been a game changer. As of now, I haven't really published any dedicated coloring books because I have just found the work to be too much. First off, I can draw, but I'm not that good at drawing, not good enough to create uh, and compile a coloring book by myself. And even if I could, it would take hours and hours and hours to have hand drawn all of these images. <clears throat> and of course, if I'd paid someone else to do it, it would have been really costly. So this is an absolute game changer. If this had been available five or six years ago, I 100% would have gotten into the coloring book niche immediately. Now, one thing I just want to note here, a lot of people get concerned about things like copyright when using AI, and I think that's totally valid. So one thing you can do to keep your mind at ease, go to a reverse image um, search. So that could be tin eye. I think maybe Google has one as well. And you can upload each one of these images and it will come back and tell you if there is a version of this anywhere else on the web. And if it comes back with no matches, that means that this image does not exist anywhere. So that I think is a good idea just for some peace of mind. This really shouldn't be pulling whole images, like this really shouldn't be a concern, but I think just for peace of mind, it is a good idea to do a reverse image search on all of these, just so you know for yourself that these images do not exist anywhere else online and you're not uh, infringing on anyone's copyright. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share it with anyone that you think might find it useful. And watch this video next to see how one woman makes 11K a month on KDP, creating and selling low content books, just like the ones I showed you how to make in this video. See you next week.